today I'm going to be talking about why I don't have many friends. So I guess you could look at this video as part art process and part podcast. I'm not going to be talking about the art process at all. That's just going to be on screen in place of, I guess, where you would normally see someone sitting down and talking to the camera. You're going to be watching me create some artwork while I chat to you about why I don't have many friends in my life. Now, before we start, I don't want this to come across as being in any way poor me, I'm such a victim, I have such a terrible life, because I really don't. I have a good life and I have friends and I'm very grateful for the friends I have. I just don't have very many friends and I want to talk about some of the reasons why that is and I'm hoping that by being honest about this that perhaps it will resonate with some of you and help you to feel maybe a little less alone in this because I think this is more common than we think. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about my life, a little bit about the difficulties I've encountered and um, yeah, a little bit about why I don't tend to have a very big circle of friends at all. I would say I currently have three close friends they all live quite a distance from me and they're all people that I very rarely see. Now, I saw them a little bit more often pre-pandemic. Since then, I haven't seen them very much at all, although I hope that will change in the future. But even pre-pandemic, I saw them maybe once a year, some of them, um, maybe every few months. And the interesting thing is, I think that all of my friends have a much bigger friendship group than I do. I don't tend to mix with my friends' friends. When I see my friends, I see them on their own, generally speaking. And I think this is because I always feel so much better just in a one-to-one -one kind of situation. I'm definitely somebody who feels very depleted and exhausted if I spend time in big groups of people. And this has been the case actually ever since I was at school. So pretty much my entire life, I found large groups of people quite exhausting. And for many years, I didn't know why that was. I just thought I was really strange <laughs> and that there was something wrong with me. But as it turns out, um, I'm just an introvert. And apparently this is how introverts are. I heard that extroverts get their energy from being around other people, whereas introverts get their energy from being on their own. And I would definitely say this is the case. I can be social and I do love being around people. I do need people around me to a certain degree. I wouldn't want to spend all my time on my own, but I am somebody who loves my own company. And I would say I feel more relaxed on my own than I do around almost anyone else. I certainly feel like I need a lot of time on my own to feel mentally well. And I think that that is in total contrast to extroverts. So I think some of this is down to my introvert nature, my need to be alone. Um, I think I also need to develop meaningful friendships and it can be quite difficult sometimes to do that. I think there are some people who are comfortable with having a big group of friends and maybe just having those friends as friends on a kind of more surface level. Whereas I always want to have very meaningful friendships. Um, I like to be there to support my friends if I can. And obviously it's lovely if they can support me too. And I like to have proper conversations, deep, meaningful conversations. I'm not somebody who can do small talk. I'm not the person at the party who's going around and talking to everyone and mingling. I'm the person at the party who finds one person to chat to and probably chats to them for the rest of the evening. I think quite an important reason I don't have many friends is because, I'll be really honest with you, I do have trust issues due to past experiences. So from the time I was really quite young through my teens and 20s and 30s, I had quite a few experiences 
where people really behaved in a very strange way towards me or they let me down um, or I just found that the more I learned about what they call toxic personalities, the more I realised that I had some of these people in my life. And it was quite a horrible realisation. But I kind of felt like I needed to cut my friendship group down to just a few people who I really trusted and who I felt kind of did have my best interests at heart. So this is one of the major reasons I find it really hard to make friends now. And I think it's actually harder to make friends the older you get as well. Certainly when you have a job like mine where you're working on your own, you're working from home. Um, Being an artist also is not just like a normal nine to five job. So I'm kind of devoted to my work. It's my life and it takes a lot of time and effort to manage everything. So often at the end of each day, I feel kind of completely exhausted anyway. And um, I know that I should have more balance in that respect. So part of that is down to me being able to balance things a little bit better, I think. But I think a lot of creatives feel this way when your job is your life, it's your passion, it's what you love, um, that can take up so much of your time that it's actually quite hard to maintain friendships and it's important to make the time for the friendships too. But it does mean that you don't have a huge group of friends purely because of the time it takes to maintain those friendships but also working alone and spending so much time alone and not going out to a workplace every day it makes it harder to find new friends. I think another thing that's quite hard especially in this day and age with social media and being so in touch online with other people is this thing of comparing yourself to them. I mean virtually all of the friends I have including By the way, I meant to mention at the beginning when I said to you I have three close friends. I also have three other people who mean an awful lot to me, who are very important to me, but who also live miles away and who I'm not sure I would classify as being close friends, but they are my friends and they are incredibly important, as I said. But all of these people that I can think of pretty much... They all have much more active social lives than I do. So I see them on outings with other friends. I see them on nights out. I see them on holidays away with other people. And even though I don't necessarily want this exact thing in my life, I sometimes can compare myself to them and I can feel as if I'm somehow lacking. And I think that this is... It's one of the difficult aspects of social media that we get to see so much of other people's lives. It makes it hard for people because I think it's not just social media, it's um, the media in general and what we're expected to be like. And that is somebody who's quite extroverted with lots of friends and a very active social life. I think that traditionally introverts have been portrayed as being somewhat odd, being a little bit strange. (laughs) And I mean, I guess you could say we're all a little bit strange. But I think that it's fine to be somebody who doesn't necessarily have this massive social circle. And I don't think that you should feel bad because of it. I'm certainly working on trying to just accept the way I am now rather than trying to change to please other people. There was a time a while ago now, I'm going back about 20 years now, and I had a job in a shop because I wasn't yet an artist. I always did art on the side, but I hadn't quite figured out how I was going to make it my career. So I had this part-time job just to earn a bit of money And I never really felt like I fitted in in that largely female environment. I think we had like 
one or two men working with us, but it was a largely female environment. And a lot of the women who worked there were quite extroverted. They loved going out to nightclubs and parties and anything that was my idea of a nightmare situation, (laughs) they seemed to love. Well, one evening, one of them invited me out to this nightclub and I really didn't want to go, but instead of just being honest and saying, it's not really my thing, I went along and I hated every moment of it. While they were socialising, loving the loud atmosphere, they were just dancing and they were really confident. I stood there with my drink at the side of the dance floor, feeling so much like a fish out of water. I felt like a real outsider that night. It kind of made me feel as if I was somewhat odd because everyone else seemed to be enjoying this and I was hating it. And I actually had to make up an excuse halfway through the evening just so I could go home. I was so relieved when I was in the car on the way home. I can't even tell you, I couldn't wait to get out of that environment. And I hope that now I would be a bit more honest about things and I would say to somebody, look, this really isn't my thing. I think this is one of the benefits of getting older. You're kind of more able to speak up for yourself and be honest about what you like and dislike and be honest about who you really are. So I guess what I wanted to say with this video and this little chat is that you can never know really what's going on in someone's life. I guess there are people who could look at me and think she has a YouTube channel, she must be really confident (laughs) and perhaps, I don't know, they visualise my life as being something different to how it actually is and perhaps people also think if someone has a big online following, so because of my art, because of promoting my art, and posting it online over many, many years, I've managed to get a following of over 100,000 on Instagram. And I have this YouTube channel now, which is up to, I think it's at 21,000 at the time of recording this. Um, and yeah, that's a, that's a big following. That's a lot of people. And I've met some wonderful people. I would actually quite like some of them to become real life friendships. How do you move from it being an online friendship to a real life friendship? Especially when people are spread out all over the country or all over the world. Um, It's very difficult. It's not like being a child, is it? When (laughs) you could go up to someone in the playground and say, would you like to be my friend (laughs) when you were at school? As an adult, it's much harder to make friends So to end this, I guess I'd like to say that I think it's important to have a good support network, um, whether that's in real life or online, because your online friends can be there for you too. I've found such a community of like-minded people online. I always felt like a bit of an outsider until I started sharing my art online and then I found my people. And now, of course, that extends to you, my YouTube subscribers, and also my patrons on Patreon. I've been running my Patreon page now for um, about eight or nine months, and I have some people on there who've been with me from the beginning, and they are just the most incredible bunch of people, and they are a wonderful support network and a wonderful community. And I do think that that counts as friendship in a way, even if they're people who you're not seeing in the real world as such. I mean, behind every one of these avatars, there's a real person and we're all connecting with each other. So I do think that online friendships are important too. Whether they can be classified as true friendships, I don't know, but they're important. And I would love to hear actually in the comment section below what type of person you are Are you somebody who has a massive group of friends and do you feel better that way? Or are you somebody who just chooses to have a few close friends or maybe a couple of friends? Are you someone with no friends? Let me know what you think about all of this. Let me know what you think about friendship in general, about online friendships versus real life ones, online communities. I'd be really interested to have a chat with you in the comments about this. 
Well, I hope you found this interesting and if you did, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, like, subscribe, all of that kind of stuff. It all helps my videos to be seen by a wider audience on YouTube. So it helps out my channel when you do that. So thank you. I'm going to sign off now. So take care, stay creative, know that I value this community here and I'll see you all again soon in the next video.